Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. After scoring 20 runs in the previous two games against Texas, the Tribe lost this afternoon by a score of 4-2 to two, as the defense gave away two runs in the first and then two more in the eighth as A.J. Cole gave up two solo home run shots. But now the fun begins. From now until the All-Star break, the Tribe plays nobody with a winning record. Detroit, Kansas City, Baltimore, then it's Cincinnati, then after the All-Star game, three home games against the Minnesota Twins. This is a three-week period that's going to define this season, and it all starts tomorrow night. Great guests coming up. It's The Rock, Rocky Calavito, along with the D-man, Dennis Maniloff. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Thursday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 23rd consecutive season. Coming up on 24 seasons exclusively <laughs> here on Cleveland.com. The D-Man, Dennis Maniloff, is here. D-Man, we are loaded tonight. Yes. Loaded for Bear the Rock. Rocky Calavita is going to join us in the next segment on the phone. and. Can't wait to talk to him. He puts special into the term special guest. Oh, I mean, that good is point. That, what a privilege. And and you, as a Cleveland fan, never actually got to see him uh, play, but you certainly know of his legacy. Yes, my dad was a huge Rocky Calavino yeah. fan, so we were fairly well versed in the legend of Calavino, which was steeped in you know truth. I mean, right. he, he was that way around here so yes my dad made sure that his sons knew about rock all right speaking of the indians they lost today uh, uh, two wins before 20 runs total in those two wins but they were held uh, to two runs today four to two uh they just didn't have it offensively or defensively and bieber pitched uh, pretty well but uh i know you wanted to talk about this game and where the indians are headed yeah and i can't be accused of a an immediate recency bias because i'm talking about this after a loss you might have said if the Indians won today, oh, you're just reacting to three straight wins over the t uh, Rangers and whatnot. But my point I'm kind of been grinding on is why in this town do I get the sense that people are saying, well, this team isn't suited for playoff contention, therefore they shouldn't worry about trying to make the playoffs this year. Okay, just write it Since off. when is that the, cri uh, the uh, threshold? You have to be worthy of making the playoffs if all you, of a sudden. If you make the playoffs, you're worthy. If they exactly. call you, If they call you on Sunday night, the last Sunday of the season, and they say you go and you play the Boston Red Sox on Monday or Tuesday, that's, that's the invitation you're going after. Right, and I think back to the 8-8 eight and eight Browns that made the playoffs. Were we complaining when they made the playoffs? <laughs> no. No. The, the Indians, as you pointed out, in 97, they go to the World Series on an 87 or 86 win team. I think it was 86-75. Yeah. I, I don't get it. They're right in the thick of the wild card. They're, I, don't, I'm, I don't think they win the division. I think it's too big of a deficit to overcome. But as you pointed out in the intro, they played tomato cans coming up. Um, why not want your team to make the playoffs? And this is not a broken down group of veterans where you say, oh, they're the wheeze kids. You're trying to squeeze one more playoff berth out of them. The Indians are not set up that way. Their roster is not full of aging, decrepit guys. They, can't, they don't have to trade a lot to still be viable. You know what I mean? Sure. And, well, and when, even you, when then, you talk about veterans, you're talking about Carlos uh, Gonzalez, and Hanley Ramirez, who didn't didn't make it. Yes. If this team had been full of the Carlos Gonzalez's and the Hanley Ramirez's and the Juan Uribe's and those types, and you're saying, oh, they're in a you know they're in the wild card chase. Let's try to squeeze a little another drop out of them. Well, that's one thing. But this is a team that has a, a, a blend. It's more young than old, and. The pieces that you're going to sell off because this team's not worthy of the playoffs, 
It's really only two guys, Bauer and Hand. Right. You, Kluber's not marketable right now because right. of his injury, but Bauer and Hand are about all you're going to be able to sell. Right, so you mean this? to tell me those two trades are suddenly going to make you on par with the Yankees? And one more thing, I'm sorry to, to stop you from making a point on your show, but <laughs> When are, when are the Indians ever going to run with the Yankees no, never. and the Red Sox never. in terms of payroll? No. So if you think, oh, we're just going to sit around and rebuild this Indians team to one day match the Yankees and the Red Sox in terms of their uh, available spending money, you're crazy. No, and how about this, getting back to this uh, possible trade? The more I think about it, you could trade Trevor Bauer and get some offensive pieces because you've got more depth at the pitching rotation than anybody else, maybe in Major League Baseball. Yes. So if you, you lose Bauer, you could survive a trade of yeah. Trevor Bauer. I don't like this bullpen without Mr. Hand, and you have him signed to a club-friendly deal, right? Or at least the perception, of course. Uh, you know, it's it's all in the eye of the beholder. Maybe Hand thinks he's incredibly well paid, but it certainly looks like a club-friendly deal. You got him for two more years after this. But if you lose Bauer and you get a couple sticks in return, you next year you still have the ability to run Kluber out there, Bieber, uh, Pletko, uh, and I'm not in not in order of right. preference please by sack. the way. I'm, just, I'm please sack, possibly Carrasco. I don't count on him this year, but you know you hope next year, and Bieber. Did I mention Bieber already? So yeah. there's quality in this rotation even without Bauer. How about this? Let's say this season is a wash and you, and you blow it off, it didn't work. Okay. If you thought at the beginning of the year or at spring training, if you thought you could still handle Minnesota and Chicago and Kansas City and Detroit, then why couldn't you just move it up a year and, and go get them next year? In, in other words, why would you unload the team if you think the team, or at least the, the heart of this team, is still good enough to win? Why wouldn't you just say, okay, we'll, now we'll turn our attention to uh, 2020? Tremendous point. Uh, you're absolutely right. And here, here's another thing. You hear, well, the division needs to be more of the goal than the wild card because you only have one team you have to run down in the division. Well, sorry, too big of a lead, okay? Wild card, big old pig pile. Oh, too many teams. Really? Do you take the Los Angeles Angels seriously? Do you think that the Oakland Athletics are automatically better than Cleveland? I know, really good year last year. I know they beat up on them this year in the season series. But I, if I'm the Indians, I don't concede the A's, uh, concede that I'm right. worse than the A's. That takes care of the two teams that are, are challenging you in the West. Nobody's challenging you in the Central for a wild card because the Twins have the division. And you move to the East. Yes, Red Sox, formidable, looking better and better by the day. Defending World Champs, World Series Champs. Yes, Rays and Yankees really good. But they're in a tougher division, top to bottom. Yeah, they're going to play Certainly each other. Certainly for a front four, uh, you know, and then they have to play each other right. more. So the the Red Sox and Rays and Yankees play better competition more than the Indians do, which gives a central division team like the Indians a chance to win that wild card. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can email us during the, during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Uh, we've, you can also follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and Les Levine. New content is posted each and every day. The Rock, Rocky Calavito, will join us from his home in Pennsylvania when we get back. Looking forward to that. The D-Man, Dennis Maniloff, also with us. Uh, also, a uh, little uh, bit with uh, Francisco Lindor I think you're going to enjoy just a little bit later. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com.
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Is uh, for today, Len Dawson, who was actually uh, drafted by the Cleveland Browns in uh, 1935, was a tremendous Hall of Famer. Davey Nelson, former Indians play-by-play uh, -play guy, as well as uh, uh, coach, passed away uh, in the last year or two. Automatic, 1947. Carlos Lee, Darren Sproles, and Terrell Pryor, all born on the 20th of June, 216 575 how come quickie time? How come trading the home run king for the batting champ is always a bad decision by Trader Lane back in 1960 when he traded uh, for, <laughs> uh, for Harvey Keene and he gave up uh, the most popular guy and maybe Cleveland Indians baseball, Rocky Calavito. Let's say hi to, to The Rock. Rock, how are you tonight? We'll get him in a What's second. Up, Rock? We'll get him momentarily. Hit four right. home runs in a game against yeah. Baltimore. We'll ask him about that for sure. Yeah, he also also uh, had a had a shot at uh, relief pitching with that rocket arm yes. that he had. Yes, I can't wait to ask him about run that through, game run, too. Run through that that game that you had. Yeah, there. we'll hit the rock with it. August twenty fifth, nineteen sixty eight, uh, in the Bronx, Yankees against the mighty Tigers, who were tearing up the American yeah. League that year. Rock comes in in relief, pitches two and two thirds scoreless. <laughs> if you need him. Uh, Willie Horton goes 0 for 2 against them. K line 1 for 2, the only In the Yankee hit. Stadium or uh, Yankee Stadium. Or Tiger Stadium? I, Yankee Stadium. I yeah. believe and he was playing for the Yankees against the Tigers. I want to say first game of a doubleheader, he homers in the second game. I'm not wow. positive. And he grew up within, I think, very walking distance from uh, Yankee Stadium. Now we're ready to say hi to the Rock. Rocky, how are you tonight? I'm fine, Lance. How are you doing? All right, up, we've Rock? got uh, Dennis Maniloff with us also. Looking forward to you coming back to Cleveland. That'll be on uh, July 5th at the State Theater, and uh, uh, that'll be terrific. 7.30, Bob DiBiasio will host it. We're looking uh, forward to it. A couple of things here, Rock. Uh, I can tell you all the guys sure. in my neighborhood always put the bat over their shoulder and then pointed the, <laughs> the bat directly toward the pitcher. And, and I, uh, truth be told, I didn't like doing that, so I, I imitated Roger Maris. Do you mind? Not at all. Roger Maris is one of my favorite people in the world. I don't mind at all. All right. I don't Let, mind. Let's talk about a couple of things. Number one, 1959, and that was, by the way, that was my favorite team, a favorite Indians team. What a bunch of wackos on that team. But you hit four home runs on a <laughs> night. And one of the home runs came off Ernie Johnson Sr., and everybody who follows basketball knows Ernie Johnson Jr. What was it like as ball after ball after ball went out on you? Well, when you, you mean the pitches that, that were thrown to me, is that what you're talking about? No, just the feeling of hitting four in a row. You must have been in a zone unlike any other time. Well, without a doubt, I, I, I always thought I was 0 for 28 coming into the game. But I later find out after Mark Summer did some research and they say I was 3 for 28. Uh, I don't really recall that that well, but I know this, that, I mean, I had pitches to hit that were 10 times better than the ones that I hit on. I, I don't know what happened, but uh, the good Lord just, just turned it around, and all of a sudden I'm hitting pitches that are not supposed to be home run balls. Yeah, and that, but not many guys can say they hit four consecutive home runs. D-Man, I know you want to talk about something. Let me just bring this up first. Um, the day, day or two before the season, 1960, uh, in, in a two-day period, your, your best friend, uh, uh, Herb Score, and then you get traded by Frank Lane. Uh, you go to Detroit uh, for Harvey Keene. He was the batting champ. You were the home run king. How devastating mm -hmm. was that to you? Devastating. Big time. But I would never let them know. Uh, Frank Lane was an egomaniac, <laughs> and we never did get along. And, and, I, and I don't know why. I never did him anything. I never said anything about him. And he just, he took a disliking to me. 
And I think the big reason was that the people in Cleveland treated me so well, and he wanted all the uh, all the allure and all, all the good things said about him. And I, I didn't care about that because I knew I had a nice following and the people were very good to me. Well, they always me. have been. D-Man, what do you have for Rock? Yeah, Rock, um, my dad was a D-Man. huge fan. My, my dad was a huge fan of yours, and he schooled his sons on uh, the great uh, games by Rocky Calavito. Of course, the June 10th, 1959, four-homer game in Baltimore. But he said mm-hmm. one that doesn't get mentioned a lot is you come back with the Tigers in 62, I want to say July 5th of 62, mm-hmm. hit three bombs and narrowly hit a fourth at Municipal Stadium. Uh, do you remember that game? I'll never forget it. <laughs> never. Because I knew in my mind that nobody ever hit four home runs in one game, especially, I know nobody did it, but I had a chance to do it again consecutively. So it was on my mind. And when I got a pitch to hit, and, and I hit it, I stood right at home plate, and watch it. I hit it as good as any of them. It went in the upper deck, but it hooked foul maybe at the last. It wasn't fouled by a foot or two. It was fouled by 10 to 20. I don't know. Yeah, so you, you agree that it honest. was a foul. You agree it was a foul ball. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. I stood right there and watched it because <laughs> I knew it was going out. The only thing is, is it going to stay fair or is it going to go foul? You know, Rocky, and it so- went foul. So many uh, young people in middle, almost in the middle age uh, here in Cleveland, only knew, knew mm-hmm. Herb Score as the great uh, radio announcer that he was for so many years. But yes. but you, you of course, were so close to him. Uh, was he a Hall mm-hmm. of Famer to be? Was he that good? Oh, well, well, let me just say it like this, okay? That's a good question, okay? I like that question. I get it said to me often, okay, or asked of me often. Herbie Score. And keep this in mind now. I'm not belittling Sandy Koufax, but her score won 20 games at about five years younger than Koufax did. Herbie score won 20 games in 56. Okay? Won 16 in 55 and 56, he won 20. Okay? 16 and 10 and 20 and 9, if, I, if, I, if memory serves me. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's and Herbie right. was, in my estimation, I faced Herbie and I faced Colfax when I got over to the National League. But I also faced him in an exhibition game in San Diego. And he had a great curveball, big curveball. Uh, and he had a good fastball, uh, outstanding fastball, but didn't throw quite as hard as Herbie. I didn't have oh, the sharp, sharp breaking. Uh, curveball that Herbie had. Herbie threw his heart. Colfax had a little more ease. I mean, they they were outstanding pitches for both of them, and and that shows in the records. Yeah, you know, and I think of the difference between the two. Um, you've got Herb with kind of the big, big, long windup, and maybe some of the batters were afraid that he wasn't looking anywhere near home plate and didn't know where that ball was going to go. But he <laughs> knew. He knew, right? That's funny. Yeah. I find that funny. How about we talked uh, during the break before uh, you came on uh, about your pitching career? And uh, D-Man was talking about a doubleheader in New York where you were, you were awesome and you hit, a, you hit a home run in the second game, but you, you went two and two-thirds innings. What are your recollections? And got the win, by the way. I think, D-Man, okay. is it correct that he came in down by five runs? Yeah, and, uh, you come in with a couple runners on, and the first batter you face, according to the baseball reference index, is Al Kaline. And you get Kaline and Horton to get out of that inning, strand the runners, keep the deficit for the top, for the Yankees at 5 nothing. You guys come back and win 6-5. You're the winning pitcher. You face Kaline twice and Horton twice. An incredible pitching performance. Thank you. I, I do appreciate your memory. I, I'll tell you this much. That was probably my second uh, personal event that I cherish the most, because the first one would have been, of course, Paul won the one game, but if I could have been on a winner uh, and won a pennant and then got to the World Series, I think that would have been number one without any trouble. Rock, did they but, ever have uh, did they ever have a, a jugs gun on you to see how fast you were throwing? Well, well no, 
They did not. They did not. But I, I love the comment that J.W. Porter uh, said in my in the book that's coming out uh, on July 5th, at least in Cleveland. Right. And uh, I don't know if you, if you have an advanced copy and you read it, but uh, J.W. Porter was asked, he, he came into catch as the Nixon got thrown out. When I threw a, a, a two-strike fastball, knee-high, right down the middle to Coot Deal. Right down the middle. And Ed Rungi, who was the umpire behind the plate, who could be a good over strike back when he wanted to be. But he was sticking it to me during that time because of the altercation at second base in Kansas City. So he called that pitch a ball, okay, a ball. And the ball was dead center right down the middle. Joe Joe White got thrown out, and, so, and some other people got thrown out. And Nixon must have been still arguing with him uh, a little later in the inning, and he got thrown out. So J.W. Porter came in, and Gordon supposedly asked him, uh, you know, how fast is he? And, and he paid me the ultimate compliment. He said, faster than anybody. And then he said, uh, again, he asked him again. He said, come on now, I'm asking you who. And he said, he looked at him and he said, faster than anybody. <laughs> and I, I take that as the ultimate, ultimate well, compliment. Well, you should, but, but Bob Feller said he was eight, eight uh, miles faster per hour than you. Who said that? Feller? Bob, Bob Feller. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I, and you know what? I know you kid, because I have a picture signed to me by Bob Feller, who was my teammate and my dear friend. Right. Okay? We always got along fantastic. And if you want me to tell you what he wrote on the picture, I will. Okay. All right. Tell hey, us. Well, tell us. You can tell us. Okay. Bob Feller wrote to my dear friend, and then, you know, and like some nice things. And then at the bottom, he said, Greatest arm ever. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, no, anybody no, who saw you throw, any, anybody who no. saw you throw from right field would agree with that. <laughs> well, I, I don't know about that, but I don't. Know. Rock, can I ask I you this? I cherish that picture. I cherish what he said. Good for you, Rock. In, in that game in Yankee Stadium against the Tigers, when you faced mm -hmm. K-Line and Horton twice, and the only hit was K-Line. Did you throw any breaking stuff, or was it all heaters? Oh, we're talking about Yankee Stadium, like that Detroit. Did you say that? What's that, Rock? I said, when well, you're talking about Yankee Stadium, I thought I heard you say the Tiger Stadium. Did you no, say that? no I'm sorry. Stadium. I meant Yankee Stadium, yeah, against the Tigers when yeah. you're pitching for the I'm Yankees in relief. I remember like it was yesterday. Did you throw all heaters? Okay. No. As a matter of fact... I had a decent slider in the bullpen, <laughs> and my my dear friend Jim Hagen warmed me up. And Jim Hagen yeah, used to warm me up when he was with Cleveland. I was, yeah, because I always liked to do it with a catcher, because I always liked to throw hard, and I I warm up so hard, you know, start out uh, mediocre and, and increase, and 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 I he used to break in a catcher's middle too, and I'd help him do that, but he helped me. Catch it, nice. and, and he. Uh, I had a pretty good slider, but when I got on the mound, I think I was trying a little too hard to throw the slider, and uh, uh, my slider just it, it left me, you know. And I was throwing mostly heaters, but I did throw some breaking balls, and, and I did throw. I had a changeup taught to me by Cal McQuist. Wow! He held it in the back of his hand. In the, almost in the palm, you know, and, and you could do it with the same motion and let it, let it kind of slide out, you know, push out. I don't know what you want to call yeah. that, but uh, oh, and I do yeah. some of them. So I tried to keep them a little off balance, but mostly he is. Yeah. You had a three pitch mix. Yeah, at yeah. Yankee Stadium against uh, hey, the Rocky, Tigers. Hey, Rocky, Rocky, uh, D-Man and I could talk to you all night. We really appreciate the time. Could. The book that is coming out uh, soon is. Uh, is, is uh, Rocky Calavito, the iconic slugger. That'll be in uh, bookstores and Amazon.com. And you're going to be here July 5th. That's a Friday night, 7.30 at the State Theater. For ticket information, playhousesquare.org. Rocky, you were one of my heroes back in the day. I appreciate you taking the time to, to join us tonight. It's my pleasure, and uh, I enjoy talking with you. And if you need any information, 
and I can help you to give me a call. Thank well, you so why don't much, you give Rob. out your phone number so fans, <laughs> fans can call you? Well, you got it, don't you? Yeah, I, I know, but I won't give it out to the fans. Rocky, in, enjoy the uh, trip back to Cleveland. Looking forward to seeing you here. I'm looking forward to being there. Thank, Thank you, Rock. Thank you, Rock. Thank you, Rock. Wow. To do that all, you and I could, <laughs> you know, with our love of the game, you could talk I to mean, that guy all night. He, listen to him. He's, he's got this cannon. You, you totally would expect he'd throw nothing but fastballs. Right. Oh, I'm going to throw in a slide piece. Yeah, they'll and, expect oh, the by fastball. The way, I'm going to throw a change up, <laughs> right. a palm ball in there as well. Absolutely. Oh, all right. 216 575 When we get back, we're going to get the vote out for Francisco Lindor. You're going to enjoy what you see. Thanks to The Rock and Mark Summer, who wrote the book and set us up with Rocky Calavito. That was a treat. Oh, that was a treat. Well, you're right. We could go on all night. Yeah. It's all right, that let's, easy. Let's take a break. More sports and Les Levine seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. In the meantime, uh, you also have the voicemail of Truth and Reason. You can call us anytime if you can't get through uh, during the show hours, which is 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. You can call 216-200-6650. Call anytime. Leave a message. Try to keep it as uh, short as possible. Thanks to The Rock, Rocky Calavito. We'll come back in a moment. Uh, Zarina Kennedy of Brokaw Advertising. She's got a Francisco Lindor commercial you're not going to want to miss. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. My basement was a disaster. We tried carpet, we tried tile on our uneven basement floor, but nothing worked. Moisture, dampness, even flooding will not harm Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of June and save up to 50%. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. I'm Francisco Lindor. I'm running for All-Star Starting Shortstop. This country needs a starting shortstop like Frankie Lindor. Frankie doesn't play politics. He plays shortstop. Other shortstops? Where are they stopping? Not ground balls, that's for sure. And you know Frankie will go to bat for us because that's literally what he does. He speaks softly and carries a big stick to hit baseballs with. We need Frankie Lindor. We need Frankie Lindor. We deserve Frankie Lindor. We need Frankie Lindor. Frankie Lindor. Francisco Lindor. I'm Francisco Lindor, and I approve this message. They give uh, Emmy awards that for commercials. Great. That is that is great. Right to the right to the Emmys. That was awesome. Let me ask you this: if if he doesn't get in the top three. Can the commissioner add? I assume he has the leeway to add somebody to the roster. You got me there, Les. Yeah. I don't want to mislead. You can't, I don't know the exact you, rules. You can't not have Francisco Lindor in an all-star game at Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. I mean, they covered they covered it to a degree by naming him one of the ambassadors. Right. But I get your point. No, he's, it he's it would be play. ridiculous not to have him as your uh, – as an all-star. Let's bring in Zarina Kennedy from Broke Eye Advertising. Hello, Zarina. How are you? Having trouble uh, hearing, but uh, can you hear me okay? I can. There can you go. hear me better now? Yeah, that's great. Yes. That's terrific. Well, we just played the spot uh, for everybody, the uh, Francisco Lindor. He's, he's running for president. 
uh, or whatever he's running for. New Balance helped put this together. Tell me about this commercial that uh, made, made in, uh, by one of the great ad, ad agencies, uh, Broca Advertising. How did it come about? Um, so New Balance reached out uh, looking for a Cleveland agency to uh, really build a campaign for Francisco Landor that meant just the world to local Clevelanders. So as we put this campaign together, I mean, we definitely were thinking about featuring people that Clevelanders would recognize or shooting video uh, at Cleveland Landmarks. Right. So uh, this will be, it's an interesting concept. It's, it's not going to be straight radio, TV, and all that. You, you go on Facebook and a couple of other uh, methods of reaching the people. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So Frankie launched the campaign on Instagram and on Twitter, and it's really helped with the groundswell of the campaign. Um, New Balance has also been awesome in just resharing on their platforms as well as the Cleveland Indians. Um, and I have to say, Cleveland organizations um, like Melt, Brewnuts, um, Great Lakes Brewing Company, Cleveland RTA, Anyone that Brokaw is really engaged with has been absolutely 100% willing to be part of this campaign and help us make it bigger um, than it is. So although we have broadcasts running, we also have some grassroots efforts planned as well, um, in addition to an election uh, rally planned for next Wednesday. So hopefully tomorrow night when we hear if he's made the game or not, um, we get to get give the green light on on our big event planned in public square. Well, it's it's a great commercial. There's no question about that. We, as baseball fans, have seen this guy from day one and how much he enjoys the game and how much he enjoys life, and he's got that constant smile on his face. How much of a pleasure was mm -hmm. he uh, for you and the agency to, to work with him on this great spot? Oh, gosh. He's, he's what you could just dream of. Um, Frankie is such a charismatic personality. Um, when New Balance approached us, they let us know he's one of the best athletes that they've worked with. And I was so comforted in that. Um, when we met with him, shot video with him, he's just a genuine guy who absolutely just brought this whole thing to life. I don't think if it were anyone else, it would be as fun and as colorful as it really became. Serena, thank you so much for allowing us to show this, uh, this spot. It's, it's terrific. And hopefully it'll help get the vote out one way uh, there's no Democrats, no Republicans, no independents. This is Frankie Lindor. Absolutely. It's uh, not too late to vote, so vote for Lindor.com. Thanks so uh -huh. much for having me. Terrific. Thank nice. you so much. Have a great night. Zarina Kennedy of Broke Eye Advertising. What a this, great spot. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Absolutely. Or is. is. Yeah. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can uh, reach us through email. And that would be at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Catch the excitement of live harness racing every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, as well as Saturday evenings at Northfield Park. Post time 6 p.m. for those uh, nights. Catch the excitement uh, each time. Open early every day, however, at noon for simulcast action from all over the world. And the weekly Sunday contest, top prize $500 each week. Free admission, free parking every day. That's at Northfield Park. D-Man, I told you we got a loaded show. It's zipping by. Yeah. We'll come back. Too fast. Mac Wilson, uh, we'll find out about him. He's a linebacker for the Browns. We'll also talk, we'll talk some NBA hoops because uh, I, I, hear they have, I hear they have a draft coming up tonight. Yes, sir. And you want to give that news that you gave out on uh, Yeah, I believe Wo the report from Woj was uh, Atlanta trades into the four hole and targeted uh, DeAndre Hunter of Virginia. So that's how it appears, at least my last check of the uh, Twitter. All right, we'll talk with uh, somebody in, in uh, uh, Virginia about that when, uh, and, and more. When we get back, more sports and Les Levine continues in a moment on Cleveland.com exclusively.
it takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at 440-449-HEAT. It's crazy, you know, just to walk around and see all of these legends and just to kind of like look back on history on like even before I was thought of being born, like back in 19, early 1900s, mid 1900s, stuff like that. So it was a great experience. You were walking through and seeing all the busts in the, in the history. Was there uh, a player or two that stood out that you said, man, when my career's over, I um, hope I'm in the same class as this guy? Uh, of course, uh, Ray Lewis, most definitely. Uh, he's like a guy who I, I always talk to like year round. We text, talk. And I kind of just shot him a picture of his bus, and he responded and was like, you know, you can get that one day, just play fast until you can't no more. So that's what I'm going to do every Sunday. When did you, where'd you uh, meet Ray, and how did you strike up that relationship? It was going into my junior year. He had the little camp at IMG Academy, and he invited me and Devin Bush out there. So we kind of built a relationship off that, and they kind of carried over throughout my season. I just feel like it's opportunity out there for everybody. You know, I feel like an organization don't just draft players to just draft them. So therefore, I feel like it's it's an opportunity out there in the air. So I'm just gonna compete, work hard, learn as much as I can from the older guys, and just like I said, work hard every day. I'm not just gonna be a guy that's just gonna come in here and just be a body. You know, I want to be able to contribute early as I can. How did you think it went for you during OTAs and minicamp? I feel like it went good. It's kind of slow, you know, just trying to learn to play, trying to get comfortable. And uh, I feel like it kind of helped. It kind of like bagged me up a little bit from kind of like practicing fast because I was too cautious of what my job was. So I feel like coming into training camp, I'll be well prepared. I'll be able to practice fast and kind of like give the coaches an idea of how I'm going to really look, you know, going forward. Have they given you any sense that you are going to get a shot to really earn playing time right away? I mean, one thing I always keep in the back of my mind, uh, John Dorsey didn't draft two inside linebackers for no reason. So I feel like, you know, he it's an opportunity out there. So we just got to take advantage and practice hard. What's the best advice Ray's ever given you? Uh, he, he called me young line. So he always tell me, you know, you just got to work hard and just play fast, like play with your head on fire. And the game, the game just be easy. You know, at the next level, you got to be able to play faster and kind of read plays faster. So it's just really the change of speed of the, of the, of, of the next level. So I got to kind of adjust to that and I'll be all right. If you're named Mac Wilson, you have to be an athlete. And, and preferably a linebacker who hits people. Yeah, which he like is. a Mack truck, no question yes. about it. So uh, yesterday we had Greedy uh, Will, uh, Williams say that he's going to the Hall of Fame in Canton, which is interesting because he hasn't played a down in an exhibition game. But you like you like when they feel that? I think it was a great move to take them all down to the uh, Hall of Fame yesterday, the other day. Yes, and make sure, and I know Dorsey, John Dorsey and Freddie Kitchens are doing this, Make sure that these guys are aware of this franchise. Right. This is not just any other franchise. When you when you have, you know, Jim Brown and Marion Motley, Otto Graham. and Otto Graham and Bill Willis and Paul Brown in your lineage, Lou the toe. You need to know that Lou Groza. Yeah. You, you you don't come in as a rookie and just go, oh, Cleveland Browns, just another NFL team. Well, no, yeah, and that's not that's not the case. Twenty twenty one year old kids, they born long after these guys did what they did. So you, you, you must assume they probably were not historians of the game and, and didn't know that. But what they know about the Cleveland Browns in recent years is that they weren't very good. Well, this, this taught them something new. Correct. And I don't mind the youngsters talking whatever they talk. It, fine. I'd rather have guys overconfident than underconfident. Right. Okay. Now, 
they're the ones that have to live with it, not us. Right. So if Greedy Williams gets schooled and people start laughing at the other players laugh at him, oh, you're really going to the Hall of Fame. It's Greedy. only 60 miles that, to Canton. That's on him. Yeah. We don't have to worry about Great it. Point. He put the target on his own back, and that's fine. Excellent point. It is uh, draft night, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers and everybody else. And uh, we had, this is the perils of this business. We had recorded a, a segment with the uh, gentleman who covers the uh, Virginia Cavaliers, and he was going to talk about DeAndre Hunter, who looked like, well, he still might wind up as a Cleveland Cavalier, but the rumors are that he won't. It's doubtful. Yeah, I, I love Hunter as well. Uh, but it, the Woj bomb that came right as we were coming on the air, Atlanta has acquired uh, New Orleans' number four pick for number eight, number 17, number 35. League sources tell ESPN and Woj. He wouldn't have put it out there if it wasn't right. accurate. So Atlanta, and what we were told, or what we've read, is that Atlanta really likes DeAndre Hunter and really wanted him. That's why they moved into the four well, hole. Because Cleveland they were afraid the Cleveland was going to take him at five. Right. So it looks as though you're going Zion one, John ja Morant two to the Grizzlies, three R.J. Barrett to the Knicks, and now Hunter in the f four hole which opens the door for the Cavaliers to say, we want Garland, uh, the, the kid from uh, Vanderbilt. How, how did Reddish fall so far, I, at least figuratively? Well, here? he was in uh, the group that included White from North Carolina, DeAndre Hunter, Culver from Texas Tech, um, you know, and then uh, Garland as well. So I, I don't know that he fell. I think he just was – in that second tier after the established big three. But it now it's, it smells like Garland, to, uh, the number five pick to, to the Cavs. No guarantees, but that's what well, it sounds like. Here's the Darius Garland story. Uh, 6'3", 173, not just 19 years old, 16 points a game, 2.6 assists, and uh, field goal percentage is uh, 54. Uh, good at creating his own shot, great ball handler. His weaknesses, he needs work as a facilitator and lack of defensive inside. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Vanderbilt got to got to be pretty smart to be there. Yeah, yeah. And he he's a fascinating guy because he doesn't have much of a college resume, right? His, uh, injury and didn't play much, but. I can think of a, all right, I don't want to do it because I'll get, you know, oh, how can you compare the two? But I'm thinking of a, of a certain Duke guard that didn't play a whole lot and certainly has worked, you know, in college, certainly worked out for him in the pros in Kyrie. You're not Irving. talking about Kyrie. Uh, speaking of Kyrie, I, yeah. want, I desperately wanted to get Kyrie into the conversation. So that was my fourth segue. <laughs> you keep hearing about KI to, the, to Brooklyn or maybe KI to the Knicks somehow, but it always was with Durant. OK, if Durant doesn't go there, they're not they're, very good. Well, I don't know that K K.I. wants to be there by himself, as it were. Why not go to the Lakers and run with Anthony Davis and LeBron James? Because your career gets defined by LeBron James, I think. You know, you're right. And I believe and me, you're number three on that team. It, well, here's for the thing, a year listen. anyway. I sense you. You're right. I think that the odds are against it, for that being one of the reasons that you just said, Kyrie. He won't be able to subjugate his ego to the point where people will say, "Oh, you're running back to yeah. your buddy LeBron again." But my oh, point no. is, LeBron over the next couple of years is going to seesaw his his talent ability. Yeah, I mean, he's not in his It'll prime anymore. As yeah. great as he is, but my if if Kyrie could just subjugate his ego. Can you imagine how nasty that big three yeah. had the, has the potential yeah, they to be? Would, that would turn the West upside down. You could stick a bunch of undrafted free agents around those three yeah. guys, and they would win 55 and to LeBron 60 games. And LeBron would just say, here, you, you run over there and stand there, and we'll, we'll get the ball to you eventually. <laughs> right? 216-575-0403 yeah. is the number to call the D-man, Dennis Maniloff, with this. Sokolowski's University Inn. I haven't been there since, I don't know, 1.30 today. <laughs> and uh, oh, I'll tell you what, we had several people coming up to me telling me this is the first time they've been there 
and how how fortunate they were to get there. And I said, well, that's on you. I've been talking about them for 25 years. It took you 25 years to get there? Try to, try to do it. Don't wait another 25 years. Located in Tremont, established in 1923 by Mike and Bernie and uh, Mary Lou's uh, grand, uh, grandparents. They started in 1923. It makes them Cleveland's oldest family-owned and operated restaurant. Bernie told me today to mention occasionally that uh, they are, are in the catering business also. You got a party. Uh, you got uh, a need for uh, catering. They are the people to call. Sokolowski University Inn, located in Tremont, right across the, the bridge, the Abbey, Abbey Avenue exit in downtown Cleveland. We'll take a break. We'll come on back in a moment. Dennis Maniloff with us. More sports and Les Levine seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. I had an epoxy-based sand paint on my floor that deteriorated, and that's why I called Nature Stone. Why paint? It's expensive, it's ugly, and it doesn't last. Nature Stone is always affordable. It's beautiful, and with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your garage floor again. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor, wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Welcome back to the D-Man. Dennis Manilov is, is with us. Any, anything new? Because <laughs> the draft yeah, I mean, is approaching. That was a huge uh, move, obviously, the four. And it doesn't sound like, at this moment, the, Indi uh, the Cavs are trading out of five, even though there have been inquiries. Yeah, but they're the Cavs. Of course they do. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, Cleveland Bill writes in, great to hear Rocky again. Great interview. Wish he'd gotten that second four homer game. Priceless to hear what Bob Feller wrote on that photograph. Yeah. You agree? Yes. He acknowledged the Rock's uh, All right. power so arm. So you you enjoyed that interview, and you said it was it was excellent to get the Rock to call you the D-man. Anybody what? else that you Cleveland guy from the past that maybe you never saw play? Obviously, you never saw Rock play in person uh, before your time. But is there anybody else that you'd love to talk to for some period of time? Well, dead or alive, in fact, Indians you know, athletes that I didn't, whom I didn't see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've had a couple of shots at Calavito. They've been wonderful. Herb score. Right. Uh, many times in the 90s. Uh, let me think. On the football side, Otto Graham a I'd few love times. To, I wish I could have phone. spoken to Otto Graham. Never in person. I was, Otto's one of my all-time heroes. Um, you know, so let me think. Uh, on the Cavs side of it, uh, can't think of many there because I saw most of them play. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah, and, and Jim Brown, very briefly, a couple times, just an awesome feeling to talk with, with awesome him. Awesome feeling. Were you in, I was intimidated. And a long one with Lou Groza, too, as oh. well. A long interview with Lou Groza. Were you intimidated? With, with Lou the Toe? No, with uh, Jim Brown. Oh, 100%. And with Lou the Toe. Yeah. Any of those guys from, from back in the day. No, I don't uh, mean physically. I don't want anybody no, to misunderstand just, that. Uh, Jim Brown, I mean, come Jim on. Brown's Jim Brown. Listen. My friends from around the country, I mean, acquaintances, I have friends around the country, but acquaintances, guys I went to school with and whatnot, they, can't, they could not believe for the longest time that I was lucky enough to sit next to Bob Feller right. in the Indians press box. Because right. they viewed Feller as one of the all-time oh, great pitchers. And we, we think of him that way, but we almost take him for granted because he's one of ours. Sure. But they're, from afar, they're going, you got to sit next to Bob Feller? You got to talk, talk to Bob Feller every night. You think you night? were making it up? Pretty much. Yeah. They can't believe he was that accessible. Same with Jim Brown. They're like, 
you got a chance to talk to Jim Brown, even for 30 seconds? Yeah. Jim Brown, the greatest ever? And I'm like, yeah, and I and I did treat that with reverence. i got to tell you a Dante Lavelli story. Glue fingers. I'm in a, I'm in a, uh, I got to know him pretty well after his playing days. And we're playing in a scramble golf tournament. And, you know, you go in order, foul, uh, shooting uh, your, your putts or what, whatever, uh, the, the drive you go in order. So now I'm the, I'm the third one, and he was a great golfer at one time, uh, but he was a little older at this point. So he's the fourth putter, and I'm the third. And after the second guy missed his shot, he goes up to me, and he goes, Levine? He, he's pounding my chest. He says, you got to make this. And I go, Dante, that's pressure. And he looks at me and says, Levine, let me tell you pressure. 28 seconds left. We're at the 38-yard line. Ott says he's going to throw it to me. That's pressure. <laughs> Two one six yes. Northeast Ohio's own glue fingers. Absolutely. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. If you'd like to get in, let's take a break. We'll get to some emails. A whole bunch of them have rolled in uh, here. We will uh, take a break. Come back in a moment. More sports and less Levine exclusively on Cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. My basement was a disaster. We tried carpet, we tried tile on our uneven basement floor, but nothing worked. Moisture, dampness, even flooding will not harm Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of June and save up to 50%. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor, wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. All right, D-Man, uh, June 20th, 1994, the Indians stopped the Detroit Tigers' streak of home runs in 25 consecutive games. I don't remember that. It didn't matter that the season was halted due to the work stoppage a month later when I think the Indians are going to win it Indians all that were year. Well, they were chasing the White Sox They were Sox game behind the White point, Sox and, but, uh, and hot. Yeah, they were hot. Let's check out this date in Les Levine history. There he is. Les, 1987, Les charges the mound when he was thrown at twice. A fight breaks out as the bench is clear. It was a softball game. You can't throw at me in a softball game. Let's go uh, the uh, best of the week. 1964, second baseman Les Levine and his Sandlot infield mates combined for nine hits and a win at Edgewater Park. Al Feldman had four, Buddy Forsythe three, and John, Cote, uh, John Kohout added two. So we combined for nine. 1983, Gus the umpire said that he once played for the defense, played defensive tackle for the San Diego Chargers. He did not count on the invention of the internet, which caught him lying to us. <laughs> true, that part is true. Ready for some quickies? Yes, sir. I assume Murray the K is an old time disc jockey. This is from Mitch and Kent. How come if Oprah Winfrey married Murray the K, she'd be okay? How come? What did the uh, uninformed, cynical man say? I don't know and I don't care. Peggy Mayer, you got to think about this one. How come if ghosts can walk through walls and glide downstairs, why don't they fall through the floor? It's a good question, I guess. Uh, this from from, I think it's, uh, I don't know who it's from. How come when the Beatles held their first meeting with the press in America, it was a fab forum? Mitch from Kent says, I enjoyed the, uh, if you enjoyed the Beatles quickie, here's another. 
How come there, there's a box in Les Levine's kitchen pantry that's labeled Betty Crocker Bisquickies? <laughs> I'm just reading them. Don't blame the messenger here. Uh, we continue on. Boy, Mitch was busy today. How come the courthouse doesn't have a playground when they're in recess? <laughs> so far, best of the night, right? Mr. Gullible, how come I can't wait to see how my new reversible jacket turns out? Mr. Gullible thinks I'm going to go with number two here. I'm not going to do it. He's going to email me and say, oh, you're censoring me now. Playground's the clubhouse leader right now. Yeah. Uh, John Patrick, I, I've got a veto number two also. Don't, don't, don't read it, but I, you agree that i got to veto that? Yes. Yeah, i got to veto you that. You get in trouble with the FCC. Political cor correctness. How come when... <laughs> but he comes back with a good one. How come when I lost my dog, they said put an ad in the paper, but my dog can't read? I still like the playground, court in recess. This, this reminds me of a, a great quickie of if a man falls into a river in Paris, he is insane. I hear you. You got it? Yes. I, I hate to censor these things because the, these people put such work into it or they find them on the Internet and cheat. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but every once in a while, you to keep listen, I've been doing this gig for a lot of years. And I, I'm planning on doing it another 25. And I don't want to get wiped out by somebody who thinks a quickie is worth it. You got it? <laughs> I'm not going to, no matter how funny the quickie is, if I just don't feel it, I just I, don't feel it. I, right? I, I'm sorry, Les, too. I've, what do you I've, got? Look, I didn't realize the this Lindor sign. He appeals to the left and the right side of the oh, plate. Yeah. Everything <laughs> about that is so well yeah, done. Very well and I done. don't have any stake in New Balance yeah. or anything. I'm simply, as an objective observer, let me, phenomenal job by anybody involved in that campaign. Let me ask the one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation with the super uh, Mike Bacon. Mike, can we play that in future days just for fun? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we can. All right, got about, uh, what do you got? Maybe a minute. Yeah, I what mean, do you got? I'll wrap it up by saying, look, don't don't count the Indians out, really. I mean, and this is, I'm not Kool-Aid drinker. I'm not in Dolan's tank. I'm simply saying, when in Cleveland do we uh, shun playoff contenders? Yeah, it's not and like the, we get there every year. Now, I'm the first to say, at this moment, they don't look the part, despite the fact that they're in contention. But what I am saying, while, while saying that, though, as long as they're in contention, maybe, just maybe, they can begin to look the part as we go. And by the way, when they're blasting home runs left and right, they look pretty good, don't well, they? You see some little signs here. Kipnis may be coming out of it. Ramirez had some good swings. I get it. Against bad guys. So what? They're playing bad teams. Welcome to the AL Central. Welcome to the Orioles. Welcome to the Reds, to a degree, although the Reds yeah. are uh, playing better and, right. and they're decent, but uh, mediocre. But I'm just saying you don't bury the Indians until they're they're buried, All until right. the math says Great so. Great job by the D-man, Dennis Maniloff, uh, who I think the highlight of the show <laughs> is when he admitted that being called the D-man by Rocky Calavito is pretty cool. Right? Two, I've had two big-time stars call me D-man, Mary Lou Retton right. oh. and... Rocky Calavito. Mary Lou Retton was the best interview I ever had. She's tremendous. I, I interviewed her about her artificial hip. And she goes, thanks thanks for the interview, D-Man. I was like, wow, <laughs> all right. We got to go. Thanks to the D-Man. Thanks to Rocky Calavito. Thanks to Broke Eye Advertising. And thanks to you for watching us tonight. You see us every night from 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern time on Cleveland.com. And of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.